Okay, so spoilers, duh. Jon Favreau literally said here that Baby Yoda is part of a bigger arc that fits into a larger narrative about what's going on in the galaxy after the revolution. This basically confirms that Baby Yoda will play a role in Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, and how the Emperor comes back from the dead or is able to live so long. But how? Why is Baby Yoda so important? Why do so many people want him, and how on earth is he going to tie into Episode 9? This, plus the numerous other elements that successfully delivered goosebumps across my entire body, is the reason why The Mandalorian is the best piece of Star Wars that we've gotten from Disney to date. I've already fallen in love with the characters, and the feeling of the show resembles real Star Wars more than any of the sequels ever will. I can't believe how well this show nailed feeling like old school Star Wars, and I'm so excited to see how the rest of the show pans out. I can't believe we finally get a character that gets knocked down in a fight and isn't handed everything without having to work for it. And the humanity in him that saved Baby Yoda in the first episode only makes his character that much more lovable. And a Baby Yoda? That's so out of left field. When I saw it for the first time, it genuinely caught me so off guard. And I'm sure we all kind of knew it would be force sensitive eventually, but showing that off so soon in the second episode was really cool to see. And if you know me, around here we like to look between the lines and figure out what's actually happening rather than taking things at face value. And if that means formulating a new theory or uncovering possible plot details for Rise of Skywalker and the future of the Mandalorian, then so be it. And it just so happens that I found some new supporting evidence that confirms Baby Yoda will eventually end up in the Imperial's hands by the end of the season and will one day contribute to Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker. Now don't forget I'll be here making fun videos for you guys every single week. By subscribing you can stay up to date on all the latest movies and theories that everyone's going to be talking about. All you have to do is go down and hit that red button that says subscribe and you'll become part of this community that's filled with tons of people that love to talk about the same things that you love to talk about. Now for all of us who won't live to be 900 years old, let's jump right into it and see just how Baby Yoda is going to play into Episode 9. Now, when George Lucas first created Yoda, he purposefully meant for there to be some mystery to him. No one knew too much about his species, or where he came from, or if he had any ancestors, and that was totally fine. If anything, it just made him more intriguing. As a kid, I wanted to know more about him, but there literally just wasn't anything out there on him. We did know that his species was naturally very powerful with the Force, and there usually was only one or two in existence at a time because it was thought that the Force actually created them when there needed to be balance. Which is even more interesting because this baby Yoda is 50 years old and would have been born around the same time that Anakin was. Which, if you remember, he was the one they thought was supposed to bring balance to the Force. But we all know how that went, don't we? What are we going to do? But we're going to come back to that in a minute. Stick around because that part's going to get juicy. So Lucas literally made these beings the OP characters of the galaxy. They were just born with midichlorian counts so high that they could just naturally use the force. But the thing is, even Yoda wasn't strong enough to take down Palpatine alone. Now I don't think we'll straight up see baby Yoda fighting Palpatine alongside Rey and turn to the light side Ben Solo, but I do think I know why the Imperials want him so badly. What really took me back at first is that Werner Herzog, the client that ordered the bounty, said he actually filmed a scene with baby Yoda and the guy that plays the scientist, I don't want to say his name because I'll mess it up, actually said that he got to hold it. Wait, first off, hold up, you're telling me baby Yoda isn't CGI? He's a real puppet? What? That's insane! Props to them for going old school and making it real. I want a baby Yoda for Christmas. But this also means that the Imperials will get their hands on him, which doesn't sound too good for Baby Yoda. Kinda of bummed over that, but it does make sense in the grand scheme of things with the Emperor needing a way to be brought back to life or survive until Episode 9. It's almost as if the client knows of Yoda and the damage he can do, and that's why he suggested killing Baby Yoda. But what about the scientist? Why was he so adamant about Armando keeping Baby Yoda alive? Well, check this out. You see this patch on the scientist's shoulder? This is the same patch that they wear at the cloning facilities on Kamino. So most likely at this point, the Emperor has been overthrown, but is still alive, and is headed out to the Outer Rim to start building a new army for 30 years, and readying himself for his return to once again try to rule the entire galaxy. But you gotta remember, Palps is old. The last time we saw him, he was like 80 to 90 years old, and humanoids in Star Wars grow at the same rate as we do here in the real world. He's getting pretty old to be starting from scratch to try to retake over the entire galaxy. He's gonna need to either find something to help him stay alive a lot longer, or find something to clone himself, or someone strong enough that he can possess and use as a host. So, what if this scientist was sent to get Baby Yoda to bring him back and study what allows this species to live so long? 
Or maybe they want to study such a high concentration of midichlorians so they can figure out how to clone or genetically engineer them. Then they can just put them in whoever they want or maybe figure out how to use them to create life. Yes, you heard me right, I said create life. So in the prequels, Palpatine was instructed by his master Darth Plagueis to study midichlorians. Targeting them would be targeting life itself and thus halt the aging process and avoid death altogether. This was Palpatine's whole spiel to get Anakin interested in the dark side. In episode 1, Qui-Gon discovers that Anakin can see things before they happen and that's why he's so good at pod racing. Now cut to a few years later and a romance with the Queen and he starts having nightmares, which are basically visions of the future to him of Padme dying. Palpatine knew about this and told Anakin about the whole saving others from death thing and it really caught his attention. But the thing was, you could use the force to not only save others from death, but quite literally create life. And this is just like how the Force creates a Yoda when there needs to be balance, but instead of the Force doing it, a single person is manipulating it to create a Force sensitive being. And if you remember, when asked who the father was, Anakin's mother Shmi just replied with, there wasn't one. What if Anakin was just a life form that Palpatine or Plagueis created? I mean, Plagueis was said to have died when Palpatine became the Chancellor, so he was alive during part of Episode 1 and definitely 10 years prior when Anakin was born. So what if he was the one that created Anakin, or he taught Palpatine how to do it, and Palpatine created Anakin, and then the Force created Baby Yoda because it was so out of balance? But like we were talking about earlier, everyone thought Anakin was supposed to bring balance to the Force, but didn't. What if the Chosen One was Baby Yoda all along, and the Force created him to balance everything out from the Sith creating Anakin? Holy cow, did we just figure out the hidden plot reveal? Because like we mentioned in the last video, Baby Yoda is 50 years old, 5 years after Return of the Jedi. This puts him being born right around the same time that Anakin was born. This is a lot to take in. And I just saw an article where J.J. Abrams came out and revealed he just sat down with George Lucas to completely talk about midichlorians. I mean, if that doesn't say it all, I don't know what will do it for you. He literally went to the brains, the creator of the idea of life being brought into existence by midichlorians, to talk to him while he was writing episode 9. And the Mandalorian's release schedule literally coincides with Rise of Skywalker perfectly to set something like this up. The seventh episode comes out the day before episode 9 releases, which will probably set something really big up and then the Rise of Skywalker drops and then we'll get the final episode the week after. And this wouldn't be something new for Disney to do. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show did this when Captain America Winter Soldier came out. They released a partial season leading up to its release, revealing a few Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. were Hydra, and then we learned a bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D. was Hydra in Winter Soldier, and then the show hinted towards Avengers Age of Ultron. And I think we're going to see something in similar fashion here too. They're going to tell us how they use Baby Yoda to aid in the Emperor's return, and then we'll see him come back in the Rise of Skywalker, and then the last episode will deal with the fallout of this information and set everything big up for Season 2. And I gotta say, I'm really excited for this. I don't know if they're going to drain the midichlorians from Baby Yoda for old palps to feed off of, or maybe figure out how to clone them or something, I don't know. There's just so many possibilities, but I'm also hoping they touch on the Anakin being created by Palpatine thing too. There's been a bunch of of rumors about Hayden Christensen being in the movie since he showed up at Celebration and started appearing in all things Disney recently, so we'll have to look out for those answers as well. I've been really happy with The Mandalorian recently. It's just so refreshing to have something that's Star Wars come out and I don't have to try to like it. Do you know what I mean? I just fall in love with it. This actually feels like Star Wars. They tried to capture this feeling in the sequels, but failed to do so by a long shot, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Even George Lucas's comments after seeing The Force Awakens told us that. He thought it stayed way too close to the originals and tried to copy it and didn't take any leaps forward. They just tried to make a reboot with all new characters that weren't even established that well. I think the difference between The Mandalorian and the sequels is that the sequels quite blatantly tried to copy the originals while distancing themselves from them at the same time. They got rid of all the original characters, ships, aliens, worlds, literally everything, and wanted us to like them just the same. Whereas The Mandalorian takes place within the same universe, and it feels like that. The characters feel familiar, they use the same aliens, and the worlds feel like they're from the same universe. It adds value and appreciation to the originals by adding to their story. And it's so relieving to finally get something that does this so well. In the sequels, it was a bunch of foreign things that they tried to make feel familiar, and wherever you went in the galaxy, 
Roxy, everybody spoke English. I've lost track of how many different languages we've heard in the first two episodes of this show, and I absolutely love it. Just like that, we're back to being in a massive galaxy that's not nearly as nice as the sequels made it seem. Along with no main characters having to go through anything trivial to get what they wanted, they also separated themselves from everything that was previously established to create new characters and aliens that they could profit off of. But who am I to say, right? Let them do their thing, I'm sure somebody likes it. Maybe just them, but who knows. I just want to give a big shout out to whoever put Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni, and George Lucas together for something that finally feels like it's part of Star Wars. I thank you. The fans thank you. Please don't stop what you're doing. I can't wait to watch the rest of this show, and I'm over here jumping in my booties for season two. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to put an end card here to subscribe. All you have to do is click this circle. It couldn't be any easier. I would really appreciate it. And comment down below how you think Baby Yoda will help the Emperor come back in Episode 9 with a new groove. I'm curious to hear what you all think of this. Share this video with a friend and go watch my other video on The Mandalorian. I'm going to be making more videos as the season continues and I hope to see you back here for them. I hope you have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Peace. May the Force be with you.